Thank you, Sergio. And it's also a pleasure to, to come back in, uh, in San Carlos because, as uh, Sergio has told you, it was a, a long story. We have begun yesterday. And uh, every time it's a pleasure to, to work with Brazilians. And uh, I, I welcome Tony Mar during one, one year in 2013. And uh, it was a great pleasure to work with him and to, to be here with you. And I thank you for your, your presence here. I am going to, before to, to speak about science, I am going to, to present very quickly the, the region of Po, which is a very small city compared with San Carlos, because we have only 50,000 inhabitants. And it is a, a city which is in the southwest of France, very close to Spain, close to the mountains, because between Spain and France, we have the Pyrenees, and very close to Atlantic Ocean. That means it's, that's right, it is a, a pleasant region due to the fact we have the sea, we have the mountains, and it is also an historical city due to the fact the, the King Henry IV uh, was born in uh, Pau and uh, he has his uh, castle. But it is not only an historical city, we have also, and you can ask Tony Ma, he, he has appreciated different wines, uh, cooking with uh, fatty liver, uh, fatty uh, duck. We have also some conserve of duck, cheese, and we have a, a special soup, which is called garbure, and Tony has appreciated uh, very different uh, times we, we, we have uh, lunch together. And uh, also it is a touristic region due to the fact we have the Pays Basque with its uh, specific houses. We have also the sanctuary of Blessed Virgin Mary who has uh, appeared to two shepherds in this grotto and we have also some grottos with uh, uh, different uh, rivers and so on. Within this uh, uh, university, in which we have only 10,000 students in science, legal, uh, languages, uh, marketing, economy, and so on, there is an, an institute in which we have chemistry and biology, which is called Institute of Analytical Science and Physical Chemistry for Environment and Materials. These are the, the two great directions of, sci of science in Po concerning chemistry and biology. In this institute, we have more or less 200 uh, people, 120 permanent staff, and 100 non-permanent between PhD students, postdocs, and so on. This institute is divided in four groups. And uh, one of them is uh, um, a group which is uh, dedicated for physical chemistry with expertise in theoretical chemistry and reactivity. In the first uh, subgroup, and another subgroup is, uh, has competencies, materials, surfaces, and interfaces concerning more specially the photoactive materials and materials for energy. A second one is dedicated to, in fact, analytical techniques, either for environment or biochemistry, and it is uh, uh, very specialized in specialization of metals and metalloids in biological media and environment. The third one is more on biology, and it is more on the impact of pollutants on the microbial uh, population. And they uh, try to, uh, to understand what are the relations between the presence of pollutants and different response 
either structural or cellular physiological um, response. Finally, there is a group which is involved in physics and chemistry of polymers, in which I work. And we have three different topics, macromolecular engineering for uh, polymerization, and especially for uh, control radical polymerization, study of surface and interfaces, and it is most on the grafting of polymers on the surface, and what is the behavior of this surface, and another one which is now less and less uh, studied, it is the rheology of complex fluids. Within this group, I work, and uh, I am not going to develop as Sergio has told you. I work especially in the natural polymers, especially in the chemical modification, and now for three or four years on eco-friendly processes, such as microwaves, and after characterization and the study of the properties of such derivatives, and the relationships between the, the chemical modifications, the new structure, and some specific properties, such as rheological or interfacial properties. And finally, I work on, I, as I do not do some uh, uh, very theoretical uh, research, I work on what may be the applications, how it's possible to improve these applications by the, uh, using the modification of these uh, uh, polysaccharides. The presentation I am, uh, I am given to you uh, today concerns the chitosan-based hydrogels for, and especially for biomedical applications, and I am going to focus it today on the control release. The, uh, the summary is I am going to give you a very quick introductions on the systems for the controlled drug re release and uh, what may be the, the drawbacks and what is the reason why we have worked on and what is the objectives of the different uh, topics I am going to speak today. And after I am going to discuss three different systems and to give you some, some conclusions. First, if we consider the classical drug release, which is based on the simple and rapid drug response using, generally, we use oral or injectable routes, we have observed different drawbacks. And the major one is due to the fact that the drug we are going to inject, in fact, is not going to be used in its uh, uh, total quantity due to Sometimes we are going to have a partial degradation. We are going to have also, we are going to see after a very quick um, release of the drug. And in this case, it's possible to attain some toxic levels. And it is one of the major problems. And as the, the, the drug we use in the, medic, in the medicine is not completely efficient, that one of the, uh, of the consequences will be the high cost due to the fact we are going to be, uh, it, it will be necessary to use a larger quantity than the efficient one. To overcome these drawbacks, one of the, uh, of the, of the possibility is the sustain or the controlled drug release and you, within the different uh, systems, we, we may use the, particul the particulate systems. The objective of this control or sustained drug release is to keep the drug concentration within the therapeutic level and, if possible, to, to have a constant concentration of the drug within the human body without any increase of this concentration larger than the, the toxicity level, because in this case we are in the lethal uh, domain, and also to have concentration which is larger than the efficient level. 
And using such particulate systems, the objective is also to be able to have targeting. That means it is if it is possible to have only the cells which are invaded by viruses or bacteria and so on, which will be treated and not the, cell the cells or the, uh, the systems which are not attacked by this uh, bacteria. For this, we, we have two types of, uh, uh, of concepts. Either the immobilization of the drug on the polymer, and uh, generally we, we use a chemical bonding, a covalent chemical bonding, and using also a spacer to have a better accessibility of the drug to the systems. The other one, it is what we have discussed today, is to encapsulate the drug either in a capsule, that means we have um, a membrane, and within this membrane we have a solution or something else with the drug which is present, but without any other polymer or something like that. Or we may use some particles. That means we have solid systems in which we have blend of the drug and the polymer inside this, uh, uh, this sphere. And we are going to discuss during this presentation only this type of system. To be able to have capsules or spheres, generally we use hydrogels. And from this, it's possible to use hydrogels by themselves or to proceed these hydrogels to obtain either capsules or spheres. The hydrogels, generally we know, and I am not going to, to discuss a lot, it is three-dimensional networks. And to have these three-dimensional networks, it is necessary to have cross-linking. And it's possible to have two types of cross-linking, a chemical cross-linking, that means the cross-linking sites will be covalent bonds, and we are going to do some uh, chemical reaction for this. The advantage is to have permanent uh, systems, and generally the fact to have this chemical bonding allows to have good mechanical properties. But, and especially for chitosan, if we use, and I am going to come back with usual cross-linking agents, such as glutaric aldehyde, for example, the drawback is the fact that these cross-linking agents are cytotoxic. And the objective of the different uh, systems I am going to present to you today is to decrease, or if possible, to avoid this cytotoxicity, but using different systems and different processes. The second type of cross-linking is the physical cross-linking. That means we are going to use the physical interactions which are possible, such as electrostatic interaction, hydrophobic interaction, or hydrogen interactions. And in this case, we have a non-permanent cross-linking system. And after, when we have prepared these hydrogels, it is necessary to have delivery of the drugs we have encapsulated. And generally, derivative is obtained through the use of external, external stimuli. As examples, we have pH or temperature. For example, using pH, that means we are going to, we are going to use some polymers with uh, uh, ionic sites which may be ionized according to the pH. That means we are going to use low acids or low basic sites. For example, carboxylic groups or amino groups. And in this case, when we are going to have ionization of the sites, we are going to have electrostatic repulsions 
an increase of the volume of your network. And as generally the delivery is assumed uh, the consequence of diffusion, when we increase the size of the mesh, we are going to be able to have the, uh, the delivery of the drug. And for example, it is what we use according to the pH within stomach and uh, the outside and uh, other parts of the digestive uh, uh, transit. Another, uh, pr um, another stimulus will be the temperature. And in this case, we use the fact that certain polymers with what we call LCST properties, low critical solution temperature, that means at low temperature, these polymers are soluble. And when we increase the temperature, these polymers are able to precipitate or to shrink. And when we have such polymers, and for example, I think we know the polynipum, it is one of the major polymers uh, which, is, which, uh, which is known to have such properties. But amphiphilic polymers have more or less the same behavior. And it is interesting, for example, to use amphiphilic natural polymer for such applications. And in this case, when we increase the temperature, that means, for example, we um, inject the, polymer, the, the system at a temperature of 20, 25 degrees. And when it is in the human body, its temperature is increasing up to 37. And if we have a system with a low critical solution temperature at, for example, 35, 36 degrees, we are going at a higher temperatures, a shrinking of your particles, and we are going to have an ejection of the drug. The use of natural polymers is more or less obvious for such biomedical applications due to the fact they are not toxic, they are biocompatible, biodegradable, and most of the natural polymers are able to be chemically cross-linked or physically cross-linked. And that means it will be possible to use, for some of them, these two types of cross-linking to play and to, uh, uh, to modulate, to tune the different properties of these systems. I am going to present the results we have obtained uh, during the last five, six years using hydrogels based on chitosan. I am not going to discuss the chitosan because most of them work on this. And the only thing is the fact we have amino group, which, is, which are able to be ionized when we decrease the pH down, uh, below the pKa. That means more or less a value of 6. And that means at pH lower than 6, we are going to have ammonium groups. And it will be possible to have re, um, electrostatic repulsions and so on. And we have also uh, used sometimes, not uh, in all the cases, but in the uh, systems I am going to present today, some of them are with gelatin. The gelatin is generally obtained by uh, the hydrolysis, either, either alk acid or alkaline hydrolysis of collagen. And the interest is we have also amino groups and we have also carboxylic groups. That means it will be possible to have either electrostatic interactions, but also the ability to do some chemical modification of such uh, polymer. The interest using gelatin is the fact that it is a little bit more hydrophilic than chitosan. And as we are going to see, as we want to, um, to be able to tune, for example, the swelling properties of such systems, because we have observed that either by increasing or decreasing the size of the, of the gel, that means we increase or decrease the swelling, it is possible to have the release of uh, uh, the drug. 
this release is very well correlated with the swelling properties of the hydrogels. And that means if we have uh, systems which are more or less hydrophilic, the interactions with water will be different and we will be able to tune the swelling properties of such materials within aqueous system. The first, as I have already seen, the objective, the major of the objective of the systems I am going to present today is to decrease the, um, the toxicity, the cytotoxicity of our systems, which is especially due to the presence of the cross-linking agent. The first uh, strategy to decrease this cytotoxicity, that means the use of such covalent cross-linking agent, is the, what we have called the double cross-linking systems. That means, as we have amino groups, it is possible if we use, for example, aldehyde systems with at least two aldehyde functions, it's possible to react using, for example, the reductive amination reaction. It is possible to react with two amino groups, which may be from two chitosan chains, and in this case, we are going to have the cross-linking of this system. But we have toxicity. And the use of an, a, a unique cross-linking system, such as sulfate, as we have put here, that means sodium sulfate, but also tripolyphosphate sodium, that means it is necessary to have multivalent Cat, uh, anions able to interact with the ionized amino groups. In these conditions, we are, we are going to decrease, to, to have a very uh, strong decrease of the quantity of aldehyde groups, for example, to have the cross-linking of the system. But it is with this type of ionic cross-linking, it is necessary to have a minimal uh, content of covalent cross-linking agent to have sufficient mechanical properties for the capsules or the, uh, the spheres. The ionic cross-linking is the, uh, responsible of lack of stability or storage problems due to uh, this lack of uh, mechanical properties. And that's the reason why it is necessary to have the double cross-linking. Uh, to, to give you an idea of the system, it is a complex system due to the fact we are going to have, as polymers, chitosan at least, by perhaps in this case, chitosan and gelatin. In acid environments, that means we are going to have amino groups which are protonated. We are going to have interactions with sulfate for the problem for ionic cross-linking and reaction, chemical reaction with lutaric aldehyde for, for aldehyde, for example. And we are going to have here a system in which we are going two types of polymers and two types of cross-linking agents. According to the process we are going to use to prepare such system, that means as a, only the, uh, a mixture of the polymers and the different cross-linking agents, we are going to have hydrogels. If you use, for example, reverse emulsion cross-linking process, we are going to have some particles. And if we have double emulsion systems, it's possible also to have some capsules. That means, according to the process, according to the applications you want, it is possible to have different uh, topologies for your uh, materials. As an example, to prepare nanoparticles, we begin to, to prepare a reverse emulsion. That means a water uh, solution within. Here it is a system with toluene and surfactant. We prepare the, uh, the, uh, the emulsion and then 
if we prepare the particles, we begin with the ionic cross-linking, which is practically instantaneous, and then we are going to do the covalent cross-linking uh, reaction. But for example, if we want to prepare the hydrogels, we prefer to begin with the covalent cross-linking reaction due to the fact to, to have a minimal uh, mecha mechanical properties, and then we are going to do the ionic uh, cross-linking. In general, it is, necessary, it is not necessary to have a large amount of covalent cross-linking. We have observed that even with 10% of amino groups which are covalently uh, cross-linked, it is enough to have sufficient physical, uh, mechanical properties. The morphology of the particles we, was obtained by uh, electron microscopy. We have a spherical shape. And what we have observed is, according to the different reaction parameters, the, the different quantity of uh, the cross-linking agent, the ratio between polymers, or the ratio between the different uh, um, cross-linking agents, the steering of the, uh, of the emulsion, and so on, it is possible to adjust the size of the particles or the capsules. Because according to the different uh, administration route, you are going to uh, need different size of particles or capsules. For example, these ones, we have uh, uh, particles between 200 and 500 nanometers. And the first test we have also wanted to, to do was, is it possible to include different uh, drugs and after the release? And we have effectively opta uh, reached um, a positive encapsulation and then uh, pretty, uh, the ability to release. And I am going to come back on this type of uh, curves by playing on the different uh, uh, formulations to be able to tune the, the, the rate at, at which we are going to have the release. But when we want to uh, do some uh, biomedical uh, systems, according to the different uh, uh, types of drugs, the different types of administration routes, the different systems in which we want to include these uh, particles or capsules and so on, it is necessary to be able to uh, adjust the different properties of our systems. Because if we have materials in which we have only one, uh, we have a property in um, a very uh, short, uh, prop with very short properties, that means we are not able to tune these properties in a wide domain, in fact, we are not going to be able to use them for uh, many applications. And what we have wanted to, to study is, is it possible to adjust and to tune these different properties? What are the different parameters? And it is something which is not very far from the, what, what you do in a a large number of experiments. It is for you the, chemo, the, the, the chemochemistry. And we have also done some experimental plan play, uh, playing with different parameters to see what is the influence of such parameters of the properties. Here we have the size of the different capsules. And it is possible to, to adjust between, for example, 100 more or less, and here 600 nanometers, playing only on the ratio between amino groups, that means the polymer concentration, and here the cross-linking, the quantity of the cross-linking agent, of ionic cross-linking agent, which is here the sodium sulfate, keeping constant the covalent cross-linking agent. And when we increase this ratio, that means when we decrease 
the quantity of ionic cross-linking agent. As we are going to have less uh, cross-linking sites, we are going to have an increase of the size of the, party, of the capsules. And in the same, uh, uh, using the same parameter, we are going to be able also to adjust and to tune the swelling by increasing, by, sorry, by decreasing this, uh, uh, this ratio. That means when we increase the quantity of ionic cross-linking agent, we are going to increase the cross-linking density, and then we are going to decrease the possible swelling of the materials. And it is what we have observed. And uh, we have also an, a, di a difference between the swelling in acidic, which is larger than a pH neutral, more or less, or physiological uh, pH, due to the fact that below the pK of the amino groups, we are going to have ionized groups, and we are going to increase the, repuls the, inter the uh, electrostatic repulsions between the positive groups. And here, it is possible to adjust the, uh, the swelling, and hence, the, the release of the drug, which may be encapsulated in such materials. If we consider, for example, hydrogels, we have done more or less the same thing. We, we observe here the same effect of the quantity of sulfate, of sodium sulfate. When we increase, we decrease the swelling. And we have also uh, studied the role of the ratio between gelatin and chitosan. We have observed that when we increase this ratio, we increase the swelling. And the swelling was in aqueous solutions. And this increase was related with the hydrophily we have increased with the use of the gelatin compared with a certain hydrophobicity of the, uh, the chitosan due to the presence of N-acetyl groups. What we observe is when we have ratio large, larger than four, we observe a decrease. And at that time, we have no answer for this decrease of the swelling when we increase the quantity of the gelatin. And as a consequence, we have, as we have, uh, as we have said, that we have a relation between the release capacity of the material and the swelling capacity of this material, we have exactly the same type of figures. We decrease the release of the drug when we increase the sodium sulfate content. That means we increase the cross-linking. And we also increase this release when we increase the, gelat the gelatin content. And after, we observe also a small decrease when we, confer, when, when we consider the caffeine. As we have uh, uh, told at the beginning, we have some also, we, if it was possible, to have targeting of such materials. Here we have uh, uh, labeled uh, these particles with fluorescein. And using confocal uh, microscopy, we have observed the different biodistribution of such particles within the heart, within lung and liver, as we have wanted to have a specific delivery within this organ. And we observe effectively that we have a specific, a major distribution of such particles within live and we have done different type of administration intravenous or intraperitoreal we have finally we have tested such systems with double crossing uh, systems on for two applications first it was antitumoral applications because we have worked with uh, organic chemical uh, scientists, which have prepared the specific antitumoral uh, chemicals. And we have uh, incorporated 
this chemical within our systems, and uh, we have studied his influence on implanted Gerin's carcinoma within rats. And on the control, for, for the control rats, we have observed we, uh, a very quick increase in volume of the tumors, which is followed by ulceration and then dissemination. When we have incorporated our systems and we have injected such a systems within the, the tumor, we have observed that the tumor is, the increase in volume of the tumor has uh, decreased a lot even in quantity and in kinetics. And uh, moreover, we have observed the, uh, the ulceration of the tumor only for 50% of the rats, and the dissemination of the tumors only on 10 or 20% of rats. That means we have improved the, uh, the treatment with either the use of this new uh, chemical, and also it is possible to use such double cosinking systems for such application. And when uh, uh, we want to observe the different uh, tissues which are very close to the tumor, we have not observed any necrosis of the tissues. Another application was the ophthalmic applications because one of the problems for ophthalmic applications is uh, the fact of the uh, biodisponibility of the drug due to the fact we have the eye which are, uh, move, who move uh, very often, and the interest use of using chitosan for such applications is the mucoadhesivity of the chitosan. And in this case, we are going to have, when you use uh, hydrogels or particles with chitosan, we are going to keep the, uh, the chitosan particles at the surface of the eye, and it will be possible due to temperature, because we have also here some uh, collapse of the, poly of the system. We have observed that we have administrated the, the particles using a searing, and first, the first thing we have to observe is we have no adverse reaction when we apply these particles at the surface of the eye. And then we have here treated some congestion, and we observe a decrease of this congestion even after, because here we are after 10 minutes, after 10 minutes we have a very sharp decrease in the red color of the eye. And we have uh, demonstrated with such applications that it is possible to use double crosslink systems because we have also uh, tested the cytotoxicity and so on for these biomedical applications. The second um, concept, the strategy, is in this case to avoid the use of uh, organic systems such as glutaric alde aldehyde it's possible, as it is done here, for example, to use genipin, and in this case, you are going to have covalent cross-linking using a natural cross-linking system. But here, I am going to present the use of a natural cross-linking agent, which is the tannic acid, which is a natural, non-toxic polyphenol, which is obtain, obtained during secondary... Um, <coughs> metabolism of different uh, systems, such as tea, coffee, and so on. It is, this tannic acid has also some uh, pharmaceutical or biomedical uh, properties, and it may be possible to use them for such properties, but it was not this, our goal today. The interest of this poly polyphenol is, as we have a large number of hydroxyl groups, it is possible to have some hydrogen interactions with amino or carboxylic or hydroxylic groups within 
chitosan, uh, gelatin, or here also with polyvinyl alcohol. In this type of systems, we have only physical uh, cross-linking, but as we have a great, a large number of hydrogen interactions which are possible in these systems, we have observed this, uh, interesting mechanical properties. Only with this type of uh, cross natural cross-linking agent. After we, we mix the polymer solution with tannic acid and after evaporation of the, of the aqueous solvent, it is possible to have, with time, a film with correct mechanical properties. And we have observed the morphology of these films, which depend upon the ratio between chitosan and tannic acid. When we have a, a large content in tannic acid, we are going to have a rigid system. And in this case, we are not going to have a large flexibility of the chitosan chains. And uh, we are going to have a stiff conformations, which is uh, uh, observed by, with um, a non-smooth, uh, rugous uh, surface. When we decrease the, the content in the, in the tannic acid, we are going to have a relaxation of the chitosan chains, and we are going to have a very smooth uh, surface of our film. And we have also tested the swelling and the release using, for example, calcine from these films. And we observe the same type of, uh, uh, of curves and behavior. When we decrease the content in cross-linking agent, we are going to decrease the cross-linking uh, density. And as a consequence, we are going to increase the swelling. Here we have the swelling with the smallest content in tannic acid. And as a consequence, we are going to have also the quickest release with this type of system with the lower content in tannic acid. That means we have exactly the same behavior with this type of cross-linking agent compared with already of previous systems. When we observe the, and we study the release kinetics of active matter, that means in this case drugs, the ideal behavior would be this one. That means we have a constant release rate for our drug. But experimental, experimentally, we observe what is called the burst effect. That means in the first period of the release, we have a large quantity of the drug which is released, leading sometimes in drug concentration which are larger than the lethal or the toxicity level, which is a problem. And the other problem is, as we have a very quick release of the drug, we decrease the lifetime of our system. And we have wanted, using these, these systems with low toxicity, we have wanted to try a solution to solve this burst effect. <coughs> and for this, we have considered that it is necessary to reduce this release kinetics in the first period by using, for example, an intermediary barrier. We have already one barrier, which is the hydrogel or the capsule or the, the sphere. But if we had another one, we may try to decrease this initial period in which we are going to have a very quick release. For this, we have used liposomes. Liposomes are prepared with lipids, and we have 
a closed spherical bilayer vesicle. And due to the fact we are going to have a hydrophilic and hydrophobic parts within the, uh, the lipid, and we are going to be able to incorporate, according to the nature, hydrophilic or hydrophobic nature of the drug, either in the, uh, the membrane or inside your vesicle. And it will be possible to have the, uh, to, to be able to uh, incorporate different types of drugs, which may be hydrophilic or hydrophobic. And the, the liposomes are already used for encapsulation or uh, for also some release within different uh, uh, applications. And uh, in fact, it is, it is not very old systems because we have the beginning of the different uh, research on such liposomes are only uh, 50 years ago. The properties of liposome is Keep, due to the fact we have lipids, we keep the biocompatibility and so on. But the major, one of the major properties is its similarity with natural membranes. That means it will be possible to, to pass through these membranes to be able to, to be more active within the different cells we want to treat. To prepare liposomes, it's, it's very, I, th I told, it's very easy because we use what is called the film hydration method. We, we dissolve the lipid within an organic uh, solvent. Here, for example, we have used chloroform methanol. And by rotary evaporator, we evaporate the, the organic solvent and we are going to have a, a film at the surface of the flask. And after we hydrate this film with our uh, aqueous solution, either only water or water at a certain pH, or an aqueous solution with the drug we want to incorporate within the lip liposomes. And after we are going to have a vortex shaking, and practically uh, without any uh, difficulties, we are going to have what is called multilamellar vesicles, which, is, which, is, uh, which are the larger vesicles, liposomes, we may have. But if we want to have smaller ones, which, which are small unilamellar, that means we have only one, uh, one capsule, it's necessary to to do some sonication, and after treatment at a temperature which is larger than what is called the, the, um, the melting temperature of the liposomes, and we are going to have the, very easily different types of liposomes, and we are going to compare this type of liposomes as um, an efficient barrier for the burst effect. And for example, here we have a size distribution of the liposomes we have obtained. Here we have the multilamellar vesicles with a dimension which is more or less y micron and a wide size distribution. And uh, the small unilamellar vesicles, we have a um, size which is uh, close to the nanometer size and with a very smaller size distribution. When we want to include or to incorporate the liposomes within the hydrogels, it's, the process is very easy. We prepare the, the solution of our uh, polymers, here chitosan and gelatin. We had the liposome suspension with or without any drug which is incorporated within the liposomes. We begin with the covalent cross-linking reaction to have a sufficient mechanical property. And in this case, it is necessary to, to cross-link at maximum 10% of the amino group. And then we put the different particles we have within here a sulfate, a 
sodium sulfate solution, but we have also done with sodium triphosphate. And we are going to have a complex system in which we have the polymers, the cross-linking agents, the liposomes. The first thing we have studied is the ability to have an homogeneous distribution of such liposomes within the idle gels. Because if we have separation, uh, phase separation, we are not going to have any interest in using in biomedical applications. We have uh, entrapped rhodamine B uh, within the, uh, the liposomes, and we have observed the, the, our hydrogels using um, confocal microscopy. Without any uh, liposomes, we have uh, a black surface. And when we have the liposomes, we have approximately an homogeneous repartition of such liposomes, which are in red, within our hydrogels. And it is the first objectives we want. And after, we have tested the release, in this case it was calcein, within these systems in which we have chitosan, gelatin, and liposomes. First, we observe, and it is what I have uh, uh, shown previously, we have observed the role of the different formula of the formulation on the capacity of release of this calcium. And we observe that when we decrease the quantity of the ionic cross-linking agents, we decrease the cross-linking density, and hence we increase the swelling, and we increase the, uh, the kinetics of the release of the calcium. But in any case, we have Without any liposomes, we observe a burst effect. When we use the lab liposome systems, we have prepared different systems. Here with sulfate cross-linking agent, here triporiphosphate, we have glutaric aldehyde and mixture of chitosan and gelatin. First, we have wanted to study the role of the cross-linking agent. Here, sulfate. Here, tripolyphosphate. And what we observe, even if we do not see here, we have uh, 10, 20, and here we have 10 here. That means with the tripolyphosphate uh, cross-linking agent, we have a decrease in the release of the calcium. We have interpreted this uh, phenomenon due to the fact with the tripolyphosphate, for which we have five possible uh, cross-linking sites, with sulfate, we have only two. And in this case, with tripolyphosphate, we increase the cross-linking density. And as a consequence, and we have observed this, we decrease the swelling, and as a consequence, we decrease the, uh, the release of the drug. As a consequence, it's according to the kinetics and the, the quantity we want to release, it's possible to choose the, uh, the system, the cross-linking system. The second thing we want to study was the role of the type of liposomes, either the multilamellar or the unilamellar, the large liposomes or the small liposomes. The, the large liposomes, we have observed that they are much more stable than the smaller liposomes. But we observe a larger quantity which is released with multilamellar, large liposomes compared with the smaller one. And at the beginning, we have not understood and why we have this difference, because as the larger uh, liposomes we were more stable, we wait, for, we, we wait to have a larger quantity which is released with smaller liposomes. But when we have wanted, when we have studied uh, the role of the size and so on, 
due to the difference of the size we have, we have seen previously with the, the size between one micrometer and one nanometer, the volume of the large liposomes is 1,000 larger than the volume of this one. And as a consequence, the quantity of the drug we have incorporated is much more larger within larger liposomes. That means if we have only one liposome which is released, we have a large quantity of drug which is released in the same time compared with the smaller ones. That's the reason why we have observed such discrepancy in the quantity of drug release. Finally, to have a synthesis and a summary of what we have observed, here you have the, kinetic, the release kinetics of the gels without any liposomes. And we observe a very sharp increase in the release with the burst effect. When we have liposomes, we do not observe this burst release. We have the ideal kinetic behavior we have wanted at the beginning. That means we have here a constant kinetics rate. And after, we have a constant value of the quantity which is released. Here with the larger uh, liposome, we observe after 15 days, a second increase in the, in the release. It is only due to the stability of the large, uh, of large li liposomes, which are able, even within the gels, they are able to be destabilized. And then we have um, a supplementary release of the, uh, of the drug. But after we have tried to to avoid this, uh, this behavior. Fine. As conclusions, I have tried to show you that it is possible with uh, natural polymers, and in this case, with chitosan, or as a polymers which are very close to chitosan, it is possible to prepare different types of, biomater uh, of biomaterials according to this morpho this, their topology. And it's possible to prepare them with low or, where, or absolutely no toxicity due to the cross-linking systems. It is possible to tune, to adjust the characteristics of such drug delivery systems. And it's possible for this to play on the morphology, the chemical composition, that means the formulation, the different ratio between polymer, between polymer and cross-linking agents, and also when we use liposomes on the size of the vesicles. And uh, the use of liposomes allow a better control of the drug release, and particularly we are able to avoid the presence of this burst effect, which is in certain applications, it, it, may be pos it, it may be positive if we want, for example, to treat a wound in healing, we, we want to have this burst effect. But if we want to treat some diseases, by contrary, we want to have um, a constant release. And according to the use or not of liposomes, it's possible to, to, to play with this different uh, biomaterials and with uh, these different systems. Now, we, we want to improve. And first, we, we have begun some uh, uh, studies on the modeling of the release kinetics to be able to predict the kinetics rates. And as a consequence, the different period at which it will be necessary to inject again the different uh, systems, particular or capsules, to the, uh, the, the person who are, uh, who are treated. And the other one is to have a better uh, treatment to be able to target the drugs towards the, the organs we want to treat. 
I want to acknowledge, acknowledge the different people. I, uh, we, we work on this, uh, on this subject, and especially Professor Marcel Popa from Romania, with, which, with whom I work for a long time on this type of, uh, uh, of systems, and the different uh, possibilities of funding, and uh, you for your uh, attention. And I, I am not fluent in Portuguese, but I know one uh, word. It is obrigado, and I want to say you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yes. First word. You have not talked about the effect of the chitosan, parent chitosan characteristics on the behavior of this system. Yes, because we have not worked a lot on the effect. We have, we have only tested for, um, for some tests, different molecular weight, but we have not observed a great influence of the molecular weight, but on the, physic on the physical properties. But on the whole, on the release, we have not observed a, a large effect. We have also uh, tested uh, chitosan with different uh, degree of acetylations. And uh, the, in, on, the, uh, the influence we have observed is only on the role of the ratio between the quantity of chitosan and the ionic cross-linking agent. It is more or less the major uh, influence we have observed. But it's, it's not very difficult to adjust af uh, after considering different molecular weight and different uh, degree of acetylation to have the behavior we want for... You agree that these two parameters... Ah, absolutely right. ...are also tools to control the, the behavior and the properties. Completely right, yes, yes. Another one. Uh, everybody says that chitosan is biodegradable, biocompatible, and they are toxic. But after doing cross-linking, covalent or ionic cross-linking, would you say that the system is yet biocompatible and uh, toxic? In, mm -hmm. Do you? Yeah, we, we have, on all the systems we have used for uh, biomedical applications, for example, for ophthalmic and so on, we have tested the cytotoxicity, absolutely, and we have not observed any cytotoxicity. The, uh, we, we, we merge what is called the DL50, and, it is, and all the data we have allow to, uh, to put these systems in the no toxic systems. Yeah, yeah, because uh, okay. yeah, it is necessary. It is necessary to have a good purification step, and honestly, we are not sure to have eliminated all the toluene, but we have not observed any cytotoxicity. But you are right; it is something which is very important to to study. Yeah, professor, thank you for your very nice talk. So I got two questions about the in vivo tests of uh, the delivery of adrenaline in the eye. So you said uh, that the trigger for the release, release to start is a difference in temperature. Is it a difference in temperature between storage temperature and the temperature in the eye? Yes, because what we have observed is um, uh, to have the, uh, the delivery of the, system, of the drug, it is necessary, in general, to have an external stimulus. And uh, for, such, uh, for such systems, we, we have used either chitosan alone, and we have observed some uh, delivery, but also we have tested also the, the fact to have Within our system, some low critical solution temperature polymer, which is, for example, grafted on the chitosan. We have, for example, used uh, uh, either polynipam, or we have also tested amphiphilic chitosan. And in this case, when we are able to tune the, uh, 
the, solution, the, the, the LCST of our system at a temperature which is close to 37. For example, polynipam has a, 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 alone has a temperature at 32 centigrade degrees. When it is grafted, we have a small increase, but it is still 35. That means when we have a room temperature, we are below. Generally, perhaps not in Brazil, but uh, <laughs> no. But if we keep, for example, in refrigerator and so on, we have no problem. And when we put the, uh, the capsule or the particles at the surface of the eye, the, the temperature is going to increase. And when we arrive at 37, we have a, a shrinkage of the particles, and we are going to have a release of the drug. And it is one of the of the, uh, of the stimulus, which is used generally either for outside uh, or at the surface of the body, because if we have, uh, if we have uh, some uh, gastric treatment, generally we, we prefer to play with the pH of the stomach and so on. And a uh, second question still about this system is just a curiosity. I'm sure you have run a control measurement where you apply adrenaline, a free adrenaline in the eye. What happens in that case? Is that uh, OK, the adrenaline is um, a drug which is known to be vastroconstrictor. That means uh, it is something which is used for treating such, uh, uh, the, uh, such congestion. But if we put directly, uh, it, is, it is necessary to, to, be, to be very careful with the concentration because it is very efficient. And if we put directly, uh, I think there will be some problems. We have not tried because we have worked with uh, uh, doctors and they have told us, no, no. It is absolutely uh, necessary to have the adrenaline, which is wheezing particles or films or something like that. But we have tested adrenaline with other polymers, which is not chitosan, which is generally used as a polyvinyl alcohol and so on. And uh, we have observed that it is much less efficient due to the fact we have not the mucoadhesivity, the mucoadhesion of chitosan. That means it is possible to keep these particles during a long time on the surface of the eye. And as a consequence, we are going to have a treatment. We, we may have a, a smaller concentration of, of adrenaline or the, or the problems or the, the systems we put on the eye compared with polyvinyl alcohol because in this case, after one or two minutes, we have no more particles at the surface of the eye. With chitosan, we keep such particles during one hour without any problem. We will continue the discussion after. <laughs> yes? So have you tried to uh, encapsulate this emitter in those chitosomes, you know, those liposomes coated with? Within the liposomes? Chitosomes, which are some liposomes yes. that are coated with chitosomes, mm -hmm. and then close with those emitters. OK. No, what we have done is we have uh, encapsulated the drug within the liposomes and after the liposomes within the hydrogels. We have not tried to put the liposomes within the hydrogels and then to include, we have never tested. I don't know if it, I, I have no experiment on this. And uh, maybe I said something, but uh, which property of your system makes it uh, more specific to interact with the liver? Yeah. Uh, what we have done is on the surface of, uh, the, uh, of the particles, we have put some specific uh, uh, chemi chemical groups to be able to interact and on the liver. Yeah. It is not due to the system by itself. It is what... 
Absolutely, yeah. According to the organ you want to target, it is possible to, to adjust the, the surface of your particles with different uh, chemical groups. Her question uh, about the liposomes. Uh, what's the uh, real matrix force, uh, uh, matrix force to uh, drugs release in liposomes and liposomes between a macro system? Yeah, in fact, what we have is uh, the, the liposomes act as a secondary barrier for the drug because to be able to have your uh, your release of the drug, it is necessary to have the release of the liposomes, and then it is necessary to have the destruction of the liposomes, and you are going to have the release of the drug. And uh, what we have observed is according to the size of the, of the liposomes and the size of the mesh of your, of your crossing system, you are going to have, as uh, I have told at the beginning, the major uh, phenomenon for release with such systems is the diffusion. That means it is a problem of size, and that's the reason why when we have a swelling of your system, you are going to increase the size of your mesh, and in this case, you are going to in improve the diffusion of, this, of the drug or the liposomes. But, but do you think that the, the positive energy into a macro system is very uh, uh, low when you compare it to the <laughs> uh, liposome at all. What? Of course, that you don't release is more, uh, uh, for example, the energy to activate is bigger when you have, you have a, a ketosan example into a, a ketosan system because you don't release uh, takes uh, more time to occur. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 no, I, I have not the answer. Very honestly, I have not the answer because we have... No, I, I cannot answer because I have no, no scientific reasons to say yes or not. Or no. no. Most people in the literature say that to develop such, a, such a systems as this you have shown to us, uh, it's important to design the system according to the structural characteristics and physical chemistry characteristics of the drugs. And now you talk to us about chitos and what about different chitos and derivatives to to yes. Start. Yes. The, the interest of chitosan is we have the amino groups, and it is possible to do specific reactions on this amino group compared with cellulose, for which we have the hydroxyl group, and uh, it is possible to do such reactions. But with amino group, it is easier to control very strictly the structure of your polymer. For example, if you do a reaction with cellulose or only with sugars, we do not know exactly on which type of hydroxyl groups you are going to have the modification. When with chitosan, if we chose and we have a large quantity of reactions which are specific of the amino group, and in this case, you have only the modification of such group. And if you want to prepare some uh, polymers or materials for uh, biomedical applications, it is very important to give the, uh, the commission which is able to study the toxicity and so on, it is very important to give the exact structure of your polymer. And in this case, you, we are able to say, okay, we have the reaction of, on the amino group, and by NMR or other uh, techniques, it is possible to say, okay, we have 10%, 15%, 3, 5% of amino groups which are modified. And it is one of the interests of chitosan. And uh, 
to adjust the, the system to the type of drug, in fact, we have two types, hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Hydrophilic, OK, there will be no problem due to the fact that if, even if we want to improve the, hydrophilic, the hydrophilicity with gelatin, it is more for swelling. By, but by itself, it is hydrophilic proper, uh, polymer. If we want to include hydrophobic polymer, uh, drug, it's very easy to modify the chitosan, for example, with uh, reductive amination by uh, reacting aldehyde on the amino group, and it is possible to have amphiphilic chitosan, and in this case, we can uh, in include some hydrophobic drug. We have tested, and we have no... Talking about hydrophobic and hydrophilic drugs, what about high molecular weight of drugs. And in this case, is it interesting to have a high molecular weight of um, I don't know. We have not... Yeah, sure. We have not tested uh, large molecular weight drugs. We have only tested, for example, caf calcine, caffeine, uh, cefuroxime, and so on, but no large molecule. Yeah, yeah, we have not tested. Yeah, you are right, but what we have. What do you think about that? Would it be interesting to use a high molecular weight hydrogen to translate such high molecular weight drugs? Yeah, but in this case, uh, I, I think in this case, it may be possible to, to decrease a little bit the, the cross-linking density. And uh, you are going to have a, a gel which is much more flexible to have a large molecular weight drug which is able to diffuse through the, the gel. I think after you... F my, my first answer would be we may improve your system by decreasing the cross linking density. But I have never tested that. I mean, I, I, I have no experiment on effectively the role of uh, no problem. <laughs>